Good morning. Welcome to worship at Westminster Presbyterian, our inclusive family of faith. tell you guys and these guys, anytime we sing today, you can wave your palms, okay? But now we have a couple visitors with us this morning. Someone want to tell them what we have been doing during Lent? Yes, Jojo. We've been trying to find Jesus, and every week Jesus has been in a different place. So today... If you already know where Jesus is, you need to sit still and count to 30. If you haven't found Jesus yet, Jesus is somewhere in the sanctuary. If you haven't found Jesus, you have 30 seconds to go look. I'm not sure that's quite how we went, but I just want to note the enthusiasm of our Westminster children for finding Jesus. Okay, share one of those, Brooklyn. Share one with Malik. Malik. Thank you. And let's sit down. Okay, so who has Jesus? We got Jesus. Say hi. This is our last week to do this, so everybody admire and say thank you to Jesus for being with us. Jesus will still be with us, just in a different way. And then, Brooklyn, what do you have with you today? It is, a, it is like a donkey. Yeah, yeah. And Malik, what do you have? A cute little sheep. What do you call a baby sheep? A lamb. So Jesus is with a lamb and a donkey today? Well, in this morning's gospel reading that you're going to hear me see, it's about a crowd welcoming Jesus, hold up Jesus, into Jerusalem with palm branches while he rode in on a donkey. And yet he's also called the lamb. Now, a lot of people who saw Jesus come in on a donkey, thought he was a king. What does a king do? What is a king like? Yeah, Jojo. Okay, so royalty. What does a king do? Yeah. He rules, that's good. So over maybe a kingdom? Okay. What? Bosses people around. 
What else does a king do? Yes. Owns an empire. So the king has a lot of power, right? Because he has all the land. Can the king tell people what to do? What happens if you disobey the king? Something bad happens. He must go to a dungeon, okay? What is a lamb like? Malik, will you hold up the lamb again? Okay, it's white and fuzzy. Are lambs have a lot of power? Do they have a lot of power? Do they rule over big land? No, they don't. They might eat over a lot of land, right? Well, I want to tell you guys that Jesus was a king and Jesus was a lamb, just not the kind of king people thought they were. How do you think Jesus is a king in your life? He takes care of you. Ooh, that's a good thing kings can do, right? They can take care of the people in their kingdom. How else? Brooklyn. He helps us get through challenging times. That's a great answer, Brooklyn. And why can he do that? Do you know why? Because he's our king and he has power, doesn't he? Jesus has very real power to make a difference in our lives. And Jesus rules in our hearts and in our lives. Does Jesus protect us from enemies? Yeah. Jesus took a different path than most kings. He's not a regular king. So remember that he is a special king because Jesus' path took him to a cross and a tomb. And that's not the way most kings were made. So let's say a prayer of thanksgiving for Jesus being our king. Dear God, thank you for helping us find Jesus. Thank you that he is the king we need. Even if he wasn't the king we expected. Help us share with everyone. How Jesus is the King of our lives. We pray this in His name. Amen. Last night I lay a sleeping. There came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing and ever as they sang, I thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. I thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing. Jerusalem, 
Again, the scene was changed, how earth seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on the street, the gates were open wide. tough to follow that. <laughs> but our gospel reading this morning comes from Mark 11 verses 1 through 11. Listen to this. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, 
he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Throughout Lent, we have taken a brief stroll through the history of God and God's people. Through the covenants, the promises that God makes to be our God and that we make to be God's people. Last week, we heard of the Israelites and Judeans in Babylonian exile, hearing a promise from Jeremiah about a new covenant from God. And eventually, the Jewish people did get to return to their land. They did get to come home and start over. Yet things were never the same. They did have a king again, but the king was just a puppet of the Roman rulers. The people were still in bondage, oppressed by these same Romans. Once again, they looked to God's covenants in hope. They trusted God to keep God's promises, and they continued to look for a king who would shake off the Roman rule and bring new life for the Jewish people. And that brings us through over 600 years, and we enter into the Gospel reading this morning. Jesus has been healing, teaching, and feeding. Despite His instructions to keep silent, the Word is spreading. Is this the King that we have been waiting for? Is this the Messiah, the Anointed One, who will be a sign of the New Covenant? Is this the one who will ride in like a warrior prince and free the Jewish people once more to establish the Davidic throne again? Well, from where we sit in history, it is easy to judge them for not understanding King Jesus, for not seeing who He really was, a king and yet a lamb. They might even to us seem a little bit Foolish. It's April Fool's Day this week, which is easily one of my least favorite days of the year. I'm way too gullible for it to be any fun. But it's fitting for Holy Week, for Palm Sunday is all about being foolish. Now, being intentionally foolish does not mean spewing nonsense, intentionally being ignorant, or not taking things seriously. We're talking about the kind of foolishness that those in power need to hear. The kind of foolishness that may not make sense at first, but later becomes clear. As Psalm 118 put it this morning, it's like the stone that the builders rejected becoming the chief cornerstone. Jesus taught a lot in His ministry using foolishness with some very foolish characters and some very foolish stories. Stories where the first is last and the last is first. Stories where all workers get paid the same no matter how long they work. Stories where the shepherd leaves behind 99 sheep in order to search for the one missing lamb. He used foolishness to point out the hypocrisy of the religious leaders. He used foolishness to show the amazing grace of God like a father that runs to greet his prodigal son. He took stories that people thought they knew. He took characters that people thought they could predict. And Jesus turned those stories and characters upside down to reveal the workings of the kingdom of God. Not surprisingly, the disciples and those around Jesus often miss the point of His foolishness. Let's take the setting of the scene in today's reading from Mark. The reason they were all headed to Jerusalem was the Passover feast, the time of year when all the Jewish people, including Jesus and His disciples, celebrated their salvation in Egypt. The story in Exodus goes that the Hebrew people were instructed to kill a perfect lamb and put the blood of that lamb over their doors. The blood on their doors caused the spirit of death to pass over their homes. They were saved from death 
by the blood of a sacrificial lamb. And the prophet Zechariah had said that the Messiah will come from the Mount of Olives, where Jesus' procession today begins. Zechariah says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem! Lo, your King comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is He, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Those hearing Mark's Gospel would not have missed these connections the timing of the arrival of the Passover festival, and Jesus, the true Lamb King, into Jerusalem at the same time. Jesus riding in victoriously on a donkey. Even those living the Scripture passage, though, failed to make these connections. John the Baptist even called Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And yet the disciples think, oh Jesus, you're so foolish. You're a man, not a lamb. As a Messiah, you will be triumphant in battle, not sacrificed on a cross. Do you see the foolishness of it all? The disciples miss the point time and time again. Little did they know how much they needed this lamb and his foolishness. Foolishness abounds in the Gospel reading. So take the crowd, for instance. Shouting about the coming kingdom of their ancestor David while Jesus is riding in and while there was a different king in power. Kind of the definition of treason. Did they not know their cries of acclamation would provide evidence to charge Jesus with death? And Jesus doesn't try to correct these foolish people. He doesn't say, hold on a minute. You know, I'm not the kind of king you're talking about. At this point, He'd been teaching that for several years, predicting His death, His downfall, His passion. He had been telling the disciples over and over again that the kingdom of God did not look like the kingdom of this world. That what people wanted in a king was not what Jesus, King of Israel and of the world, had to offer. He chose to carry no weapons, just to ride in on a donkey, an animal of peace. He didn't raise any armies or plan out clever battle strategies. Instead of battle strategies, he had foolish strategies, intentionally arranging this foolish entrance to the city right down to the colt. Instead of offering a rousing battle cry, Jesus offered living water and salvation to all who believed in Him. Do you see the foolishness of it all? The people so desperately wanted Him to be their King that they couldn't see the lamb hiding in their King's parade, a sheep in the King's clothes. Little did they know that the one who they called king was really the jester. The king they wanted to lead them was really the sacrificial lamb. The headline of today's reading from Mark could almost sound like a headline from The Onion, a satirical newspaper. Peaceful carpenter's son receives national hero's welcome home. The palm branches were a sign of national identity and victory, like waving the American flag for our veterans returning home from a victorious war. And yet, what battles had Jesus fought and won? What great patriotic act had He done to receive such an official welcoming parade? Do you see the foolishness of it all? The people thought they were waving branches of victory since Jesus was the warrior Messiah they had decided would overthrow the Roman oppressors. Little did they know that foolish Jesus instead was fighting a much bigger battle against sin and death. 
Have I convinced you yet of the need for foolishness in the gospel and in our world? I think of our 2015 jesters like John Stewart and John Oliver with their comedic news shows that many times offer a more honest and critical look at what is going on in our world than some of the serious news reporters. There's deep truth to be found beyond the humor and entertainment. Their jokes are often commentaries on society's problems, revealing the man behind the curtain. They find the gray area in our black and white world with their foolishness. For being foolish invites a new perspective on the old reality. Being foolish is like saying, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though she dies, will live. Being foolish is like riding triumphantly into a crowded city on a young donkey instead of a war horse. Being foolish is like being hailed as a conquering national hero when he has yet to fight the battle he came for. Being foolish is like riding into Jerusalem, into the midst of your enemies who are plotting your death. Being foolish is like redefining what it means to be king by acting as the sacrificial lamb. For when we claim Jesus as our king, we also claim Jesus as a lamb. For much like when we gather around the table and celebrate communion, We celebrate Palm Sunday not just as a memorial of a past event, but as a very present reality. We are still crying out, Hosannas, save us. We are crying out for salvation in politics, in the economy, in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, in our daily lives. And yet, when it comes to partnering with Jesus to make a change, to speak truth to power, we find ourselves not wanting to look foolish, worried about what others might think about us if we take a stand. We pretend that we have won the battles against racism and sexism, not wanting to look foolish by claiming that those antiquated evils still exist in our postmodern society. We praise Jesus as King on Sunday morning, but we keep our mouths shut during the week so that we don't look foolish to our friends, our schoolmates, our colleagues. We are the fickle Palm Sunday crowd crying out for the coming Kingdom and not realizing what that means for Jesus or for us. As Christians, We are called to join Jesus in playing the jester, in being foolish in front of our friends and neighbors. Be foolish by waving your palm branches with pride. Be foolish by coming to church two more times this week. Be foolish by giving your money to fulfill your pledge to Westminster rather than buying the latest gadget. Be foolish by taking a risk and inviting someone to church next week. Be foolish by trusting in a Savior who found power in weakness. Be foolish by giving up your life so that you may find it. Be foolish by giving of yourselves so that others may live. Be foolish by finding your place in our Westminster family, whether it's a committee or a small group or a project. Be foolish by continuing to be in covenant with our foolish God who keeps bringing us back in after we break our promises. Be foolish and know that Jesus is your King and your Lamb. Know that through the death of Jesus and the resurrection to come, we are all foolishly, amazingly granted eternal life. For that, is a kind of April Fools that I can get behind. Amen.
Sampai jumpa